Good morning, church. This morning, we will worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus, by singing some hymns of his first advent. We're going to start with a responsive reading. It's very short, and you'll see that on the um, program that is on the screen, which was prepared for us by Janet Lamberton. Then we'll go into a sequence of three songs, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, and Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. And we'll do those each uh, all together without stopping. As we sing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, um, we want to replicate the growth of God's kingdom. So we're going to start out small. Mike will lead the um, section that's on the west of the church on the piano side and Delmar and Russ will then come in with the section to the west of the center aisle and then the section to the east of the center aisle will come in with me and finally the far east section will come in with Bill. This song is actually set before Christ's advent and uh, many people look forward to that and it culminated with Anna and Simeon in the temple on the eighth day after Jesus was born. And so as we end the verses looking for Christ to come, the organ and the piano will come in with the whole uh, congregation and we'll all sing rejoice in a glorious affirmation that Christ will come. Now because he did come the first time, we know for certain that he will come the second time. So let's worship together and join us at the appropriate spot in this responsive reading. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou wisdom from on high, and order. people's in one 
Welcome to each of you on this beautiful Sabbath day because it's beautiful with Jesus, the knowledge of him coming to this earth. But more than that, he promised to be with us always. He's here through his Holy Spirit. Do you sense his presence here today? You can invite him into your heart, your life, and ex not just hear about him, but experience him in your life today. We'd like to just say welcome to each one of you, whether you're visiting here for the very first time or whether you've been worshiping God in this place for four decades, as uh, some of you have been. I'd like to invite you to turn in your bulletin today to the section called How to Get Involved. And uh, there's lots of ways to get involved. We uh, just want to say thank you to all those who participated in Journey to Bethlehem and we'll have a little further report on that but tonight uh, everyone is invited to a Vespers at 4.30 on the, in the food bank side uh, followed by a potluck supper, pictures of Journey to Bethlehem and the opportunity to tell some of the stories of uh, experiences that you've had at Journey to Bethlehem specifically this year and things that you've heard people s share with you as they went through Journey to Bethlehem. We do need your help. It's not, Journey to Bethlehem isn't all over yet. And we thank you so much for your help getting it set up. And now we are, have a big work bee tomorrow 
to take the village down starts at 8 o'clock. Many hands do make light work, and we thank you, men and women, teens as well, for uh, the being there to help us t uh, put the village in the box to unwrap it next year. And uh, also, the, uh, please note the note in your bulletin that says, you are invited. Uh, a week from today in the evening, we're having a winter celebration get together, a church social on the night of Saturday night the 15th at 4 o'clock. And uh, there's information there about that. Hope you can come. Uh, feel free to bring a friend with you. Uh, we're going to go out and do some neighborhood caroling afterwards, so dress, uh, bring some warm clothes as well. We have some transfers of membership. This is, uh, looks like one of our longer lists, but we will read uh, the list. Some have uh, requested transfer. Todd has trans requested transfer in. Uh, Todd, are you here today? Todd Morford, raise your hand. Wave it wildly. There it is. Todd, we are so glad that you are a part of our church family. You have been for some years. We're just making it official with your membership transfer here today. And uh, thank you for uh, your ministry in various ways here in our church. Also transferring out, Heather Daniel to Walla Walla, Bryant and Camden Dawkins to Dalton, Georgia, Emily Garnero to Hastings, Nebraska, Seventh-day Adventist Church, Bev Price to Spokane, Patricia Small to Houston West, Seventh-day Adventist Church, Joseph and Renee Young to Montana Conference Adventist Church, Josiah Young, Mount Ellis Academy Church, Sydney Young to Berrien Springs Pioneer Memorial Church. Uh, it sounds like we have some people traveling, don't we? And uh, spreading the good news from Yakima to points uh, across the country. Do we have a motion and a second that we grant these requests for membership transfer? All in favor, just raise your hand. And uh, let's, just, let's just do another one here. Uh, who would just like to raise your hand and uh, look around at Todd, who's going to be uh, standing up right now, and just say, welcome, Todd, to our church. Welcome. Uh, all right. God bless you on this Sabbath day. I invite you to join us with the opening hymn, As With Gladness, Men of Old. This is an interesting poem that was set to music. Uh, the first p part of each of the stanzas begin with some reference to uh, the wise men as they were seeking Jesus. And then the comparison is made to us that we will do something similar in our search for Jesus. So as we sing this song together, I invite you to contemplate how you can follow Jesus. Um, the first, second, and last verse are going to be done in a different arrangement than you see in your hymnal. The third verse will use that arrangement. It's the same tune for all verses, but uh, don't be surprised if the other verses don't follow some of that um, harmony. As with gladness, men of old, let's stand together. As with gladness, men of old did the guiding star behold, as with joy they hailed its light, leading onward beaming bright. So, most gracious Lord, may we evermore be led to as with joyful steps they sped to that lowly manger bed, there to bend the knee before him whom heaven and earth adore. So may we with willing feet ever seek thy mercy seat. As they offered gifts most rare at the manger rude and bare. So may we with holy joy, pure and free from sin's alloy, all our costless dreams. 
treasures ring, Christ to thee, our heavenly King. Holy Jesus, every day keep us in the narrow way, and when earthly things are past, bring our ransomed souls at last, where they need no star to guide, where no clouds like glory. Our Father in heaven, great God of the universe, and our Savior Jesus Christ, creator of galaxies, but came down to this place, the one infection in the universe, to heal our sicknesses, to heal our selfishness, to heal our divide between us and God, and to bring us together as a unified universal family the family of heaven and the family of god lord today we turn our hearts toward you and ask your holy spirit to fill us in jesus name amen be seated please journey to bethlehem is uh quite a journey isn't it and uh thank you so much for all those who have helped we want to just praise God for what he has done in people's hearts and lives. Many of us have heard the testimonies of different ones who have gone through Journey to Bethlehem. Some who have no particular belief in God have come through Journey to Bethlehem, even this year. Uh, some have come through Journey to Bethlehem every single year for the last 10 years and said they wouldn't miss it for anything. Uh, Denny York is, has a story about what, how God has touched his life, how God has worked in his life. And Danny, are you here today? Okay, we uh, trust we'll get to hear his story a little bit later. Uh, Debbie is going to share with us just a little summary, a little synopsis, a little report from this year's Journey to Bethlehem. We thank God for another wonderful um, year of Journey to Bethlehem, our 10th one. So many of you have so faithfully um, worked um, tirelessly for one goal, and that is to share Jesus with the Yakima Valley. Um, we had 4,935 travelers this year. Um, Sunday night, we set a record of 1,405. That was our biggest for a Sunday night ever. Um, and within the last three years, we've been within 65 uh, people of 5,000. So we've been pretty steady the last th three years. Um, I thought it was interesting when I was in here in the church and um, uh, Kit and Lori would ask the congregation if this was their first time and there were many 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 people who it was their first time ever to be through journey to Bethlehem I would really like to thank our leadership team um, this year you guys are awesome and if you are in the audience please stand when I read your name I just want to thank Russ you've been my right-hand man and I really appreciate you um, Bill Faith our building director, Alice Lobbs, our costume person. Stand when I say your name. Um, Steve Mack has done our uh, lighting and sound for the village. Carrie Novak has fed all of you for um, the suppers and taking care of the kitchen. Lori Charlie has um, organized the entertainment here in the church. Patty Titus has done the promotion. You guys aren't standing. <laughs> Um, Todd Titus has been our drama king, I call him. Um, Carla Way has done our decorating. 
Karen Wolfkill is taking care of our animals, and Zoe Lamberton took care of our dancers this year. And then I know each of them had a full team too, so I just thank every single one of you. Um, so many of you who have helped build with uh, the costumes, cooking and baking, decorating, acting, caring for animals, inviting, and most of all, praying for Journey to Bethlehem. And we appreciate each one of you so much. Please come tonight and be prepared to um, share stories and see pictures of Journey to Bethlehem. Uh, we'll have a little praise and celebration of another good year. Thank you so much. You know, we just want to say a special word of thanks to Debbie. This is her 10th year. Can you believe it? I only do one part of it. It's everybody working together. Debbie, here's just a little, a little thank you token, a little note of our appreciation. Uh, this is a big project. It is a ministry. It is, has reached it has reached thousands and thousands of people for Jesus. Uh, and it's still being told about by word of mouth all across this valley and beyond. And uh, Debbie, you have, uh, is, I, we know this is not easy job, and we know this is not easy for you to just stand up here while I talk to, <laughs> but uh, we just want to say thank you so much. Uh, 10 years is amazing. And I was getting a little worried, but then I, I heard something that just made my heart sing. I heard Debbie say to Todd, Todd, you can't stop now. We've got to get our 20-year pin. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. It's time for our offering. And um, I just noticed something when, I, when um, Dave asked me to call for the offering and I looked up to see what the offering was. It's for Adventist Community Services. I last called for the offering exactly one year ago and I called for this offering. So I'm, I'm, I've got even more information about it this year. It's a pretty exciting ministry. This is the official community outreach ministry of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the North American Division. And the mission of Adventist Community Service is to serve the community in Christ's name, serving the whole person physically, mentally, and spiritually. They provide training to minister to people in need. This offering will support the ministries that are a part of Adventist Community Services, which include community development, things like food pantries, clothing services, housing, addiction treatment, counseling, crisis intervention, teen pregnancy services, disaster response, emotional and spiritual care, which looking, looks out for the emotional needs of those who are experiencing a disaster generally, basically people who are having very normal reactions to very abnormal events and try to bring, um, they kind of described it as psychological first aid. It's not counseling or long term, it's, it's more that first aid reaching in. Um, they have older adult ministries where they coordinate Christ-centered education and services related to aging, health, finance, and social issue, issues for older adults, tutoring and mentoring. Um, again, looking to meet the learning needs of America's children and youth, particularly those in low-income households and neighborhoods where violence and other factors not conducive for learning exist. Young Adult Emergency Services Corps, a ministry to engage and network youth and young adults that is rooted in the mission statement of Adventist Community Services, serving communities in Christ's name. So um, just to you know, give you guys an update on the, the tithe and offering envelope, you can use any week return God's tithe, give your offerings, you can mark on there where you want things to go. Anything that's not in a tithe envelope each week goes to the, what we call the offering of the day, which today is the Adventist Community Services. If you're not prepared to give today, but you think Adventist Community Services sounds kind of exciting, you can write it on here any, any week you want. Um, you know, we do that, Rick and I give systematically every month to the church budget, to the world budget, to the conference budget, as well as returning tithe, but yet, um, I was gone the second week of November when they had the annual sacrifice offering, which is a, a major offering for the mission work of the Adventist Church, and so Rick told me, and so, you know, we, we gave, gave our offering for that the next week. So, you know, again, you're not stuck on any one week we call for these offerings. It just gives you an idea of what, what is, um, what, what the loose offering is going for. 
So at this time, if the deacons would stand, please. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the many gifts that you have given to us. We are so blessed, so blessed in so many ways. Help us to be generous with what you have trusted us with and look for ways to help those who are in need. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Mom and Bill. I was just thinking, there's probably not anybody else in church who has played music together, worshiped God together through their music than Mom and Bill. <laughs> so ask them sometime how many years that's been. Just don't ask how old they are. <laughs> it is time for our children's offering, the Joash offering. So if the children would come forward and collect that, this money goes for the Yakima Avenue Christian School Scholarship Fund, and we put it in our Joash box up there. It's how it gets its name. We don't have a children's story planned this morning. We were expecting to have Danny's testimony, so I don't think anybody has one planned. So after you bring the offering, um, you can just go back and sit down. Thank you.
Good morning, church. Uh, I'm always nervous I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stumble up those steps, so I'm glad I made it. Uh, but this is going to be our time for prayer, so anybody who has a burden on their heart or would like to give a praise to the Lord, if you just come forward right now, and we will have a prayer together. Kneel with me if you're able. Father in heaven, I just want to begin with praise to you. Lord, I thank you so much for being such a loving God. You are a God that knows the beginning from the end, and you go before us to make clear the way for us, Lord. And I am so grateful that of all the people on the earth, you know every single one, you know every single thing that's going on in everybody's life, and you care enough to be intimately involved with all of us. And Father, I'd like to pray uh, a special thanks for Debbie and all that she does and all the staff that what they do in Journey to Bethlehem. I'm so grateful to have been able to be a part of that, though reluctant at times. Uh, Lord, I just thank you for every person that came through and not just for the people that came through, but for the people that are in our church and out of our church that give their time to volunteer. And Lord, I pray for those people who are coming from other churches who came through um, as visitors and also help that they may see that our church is different that there's something peculiar about us that they may want to get to know. So I pray a special blessing upon each of them, Lord. May you keep their hearts stirring, and may you keep what's, what happened here in their minds for long times to come. Father, as we embark upon the Christmas season, we know that it's not just about trees and lights and presents, Lord, but it's truly a time to reflect for you. And as we close upon this year, may we each think about what you have done to grow us in this year, to bless us in this year, and to take care of us in this year, Lord. And as we embark upon a new year um, with struggles and trials and hard things to come for sure, Lord, we draw near to your coming, and may we remember the loving kindness that you've showed us throughout 2018. Father, I'd like to pray for the people that are sick in our bulletin, those many people who are experiencing cancer, who are going through treatment, um, and for their family members who are also involved. I'd like to pray for Gabriella, the little girl who has had her second heart surgery, Lord. There is nothing more precious than a child. And I pray strength and encouragement for her and her family, but most of all, I pray that they will see the hands of you working through this beautiful miracle that it is only because you are the great physician that she has had another opportunity to live life. I pray that you will rise each of the children in this church and around the world up to be mighty warriors for you. And may we, the ones who hold their hands, be connected even more so to you as well, that we may guide them in the right ways. Um, I pray for Danny and wherever he is, whatever's going on, Lord, I pray that he makes it safely. I pray that um, we may all Come together, united as a church, Lord, and as we continue to do things as a church, may we draw nearer in love with each other and nearer in love with you. Um, I'd like to close with a moment of silence for those that have come forward to make their pleas and their requests made known to the Lord. Um. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you for the wonderful music today, including your singing. Isn't it wonderful to be able to sing Christmas carols? Wonderful message in each one. You know, if there's one vital message for us from the Bethlehem story, what would it be? You know, amid all the twinkling lights and the holiday melodies and the busyness of gift shopping, one message, one message from poor sheep herders rings out clear and true in 2018. And here's what it is. It's this. The real experience of the Advent season is only for seekers. You know, have you ever heard a, a new song that, and, uh, and, and you heard it for the very first time, but somehow that, it, that just got into your subconscious and, and you started just humming it and you found yourself, you know, as you're going around dur your work during the day or whatever, you're driving in the car, you're humming little snatches of this song. You don't know all the words. Maybe you're trying to sing a few words that you remember, but it's that tune that just keeps playing in your mind. Have you ever experienced something like that? That tune is there, but uh, you may be missing the real beauty of the, the full message, the words of that song. The real experience of a meaningful song may be even more than the music, may be in the words, the, the message of that song that maybe you didn't comprehend the very first time you heard it. And in the same way, the real story of Advent is hidden. It's, it's a deeper experience that's reserved just for the few who are willing to seek and to ponder. Now today we're going to explore four short stories, all of them true stories, each with a powerful message about how to find Jesus. How do we find Jesus any day of the year? How do we find Jesus today? How do we find Jesus in all the busyness of this last month of the year? You know, how much do you know about biblical shepherds? Well, if we look at Nathan Green and Harry Anderson's paintings of the shepherd, the good shepherd with the sheep, maybe a little lamb across its shoulder. There's, some, there's a beautiful message there, but it may not all be just like the picture. You know, the picture is so peaceful, so idyllic, so romantic. You know, the perfect pastures and, and everything is so beautiful. It may not have been quite like that for the real shepherds. You know, shepherds were a poor class in Israel. They were, they were the ones that were looked down upon. Many of them were not educated. Some were unable to read. They were isolated from society because a lot of the year they were living out in the fields and on the hills, staying with their sheep night and day. Many times the sheep they took care of were not their own. They were just paid, you know, a few denarii to, to take care of some wealthy person's flocks. They were just poor shepherds. You know, and it had been planned for millennia, for millennia. Heaven had been planning the amazing event down to the very last detail. A little less than a year ago, a young teenage girl from northern Israel had received a most startling, a most amazing message from an angel. She was to become the mother of the Messiah in just a few short months. Imagine that. And now traveling south to Bethlehem, and which is near Jerusalem, to register for Caesar's census, Mary and her husband Joseph know that it's almost time for this baby to be born. And heaven knew it too, didn't they? You know, the excitement of the angelic hosts, the messengers, cannot be described. An, an announcement was in order. They were excited about being a part of that announcement. 
the Heavenly Father had assigned a large company of angels to come to earth and to announce the headline, The Redeemer has been born tonight in Bethlehem. You know, I'm sure that every single angel in heaven, there's millions of them, had wanted to be part of that group that would come down and announce the Messiah's arrival. Not all came, probably, but imagine the uh, confusion, the bewilderment when this host of angels, like, like a heavenly uh, parade, uh, a ticker tape parade, uh, found nobody interested. Nobody wanted to hear the message. Nobody was listening. No one was watching. No one was praying. No one was seeking the promised Messiah. Disappointment. The search continues. Religious leaders, political leaders, uh, teachers, biblical scholars, the angels are flying over, looking, looking, looking. But no one cares. So, no one heard the message of the arrival of the baby. Passing on as a great royal procession through the skies over now the very spot where the new Messiah is lying, laying in a, in, a, in a little feeding trough. The angel band looks down and sees the mother her baby, Joseph, they long to tell somebody. They have to tell somebody. The angel host is about ready to return to heaven without making the announcement. And suddenly they see a small group of shepherds on a hill out there with their sheep. And at last, these are the ones who are talking about the Messiah. They're discussing the Messiah. They're praying that the coming of this Messiah will be soon. These simple men had a deep yearning for the Deliverer. And as they guarded the sh their sheep, they had often in the past discussed the coming of the Messiah. They had listened at synagogue. They had seen, heard some even say that they thought that the coming of the Messiah would be soon. That his coming as appearing was, was close at hand. Didn't the prophet say that the king would arise in Bethlehem? As they're discussing this together. And they prayed for the coming of Shiloh, the king, as prophesied in the Old Testament. Now the Bible describes exactly what happened next. Imagine if you had been there. Imagine that you were there among that group, in the dark, on that hillside, that very quiet night, that very usual night, they thought. Luke chapter 2, verse 9. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terribly frightened, but the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said, for I bring good news of great joy for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David, and this is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in a manger, wrapped in snugly in strips of cloth. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God, glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to all whom God favors. Now, you'll want to keep your place here in Luke chapter 2 because we'll come back there. Now, among all the thousands of Israel, God chose a small band of herdsmen to receive his greatest message. Not the priests, not the businessmen, not the scholars, not the educated, but shepherds, despised, looked down upon shepherds. Why? Because they were seeking the Savior. They were seeking the Messiah. In their hearts, they were preparing to welcome him. How do we know that they were longing for Christ? Well, look at verse 16. Luke chapter 2, verse 16 says, tells what happened next. It says, they ran to the village. They ran to the village. 
and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. They ran. Now, they could have planned, they could have discussed, they could have said, you know, as soon as it gets light and it's safe for us to run along the trails, well, well, we should go in there and see if we can find this baby. But they didn't. They didn't wait until the dawn broke. They ran in the darkness down the trail, maybe tripping, jumping up, going forward, racing to where? They didn't exactly know. Into the town of Bethlehem. Maybe asking, knocking, looking. They found the baby. They found the baby Jesus. They found the Son of God in the most unusual place, in some type of a little barn or stable or lean-to off the back of some building. And since there was no bed or cradle there, they, the baby had been laid, wrapped up snugly, on hay in a feeding trough. The Amplified Bible says, So they went with haste, and by searching, found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. You know, no casual interest here. They were willing to search. They searched. They looked in the dark until they found Jesus, the Redeemer. Friend, how about you? How about you? You attend church. You know about Jesus, but are you willing to seek him, search for him, spend time in his word to get to know him, to whom, whom to know is life eternal, the Bible says. Will you search for him? Will you search for him to d this day, this month? Will you search for him in the new year? Will you search for Jesus on your knees? Will you seek him in the sacred pages? And if you do, you will find him. Thank God. Thank God that as we search for Jesus, he's promised that he will be found by us. This, your search, this Advent season will not be in vain. You know, the story of the shepherd's discovery is not the only illustration of the fact that the Advent season is only for the seekers. Just a few weeks later, Mary and Joseph brought their little baby, their little precious baby, to the great temple there in Jerusalem nearby, only a few miles away. I've been there to Jerusalem, traveled there. You have to go through an Israeli checkpoint now to get into Palestinian territory where Bethlehem is, only a few miles, less than 10 miles from Jerusalem. There in Bethlehem, uh, we, we were up on a, on a little hill. The town rose up on a steep hill to the right. Houses built all the way up the hill, very closely packed together. Down below, we saw the ancient church of the Nativity. Some of the parts of it that are still there that were built in the time of Constantine in the 4th century. I saw the Palestinian boys with their slings, slingshots, you know, Long slingshot with big old, big rocks in them, winging those things around from up on that hill, right down, trying to hit the Israeli military vehicles that were patrolling the area. It's not all peace and happiness there today. But, and it wasn't all that great back then in 5, 6 B.C., whenever it was that Jesus was born. But just a few weeks later, after the shepherds, Mary and Joseph made that tre trek over to Jerusalem. And uh, there they were to dedicate this little baby to God. In Luke chapter 2, verse 25, it says that there was a man that names the man. His name was Simeon. And uh, Simeon is a very old gentleman, but he is a seeker. And he, the Bible says he's filled with the Holy Spirit. He's listening to God's voice. He believes that he is going to see God's Messiah before he dies. 
Luke 2.25. Now there was a man named Simeon who lived in Jerusalem. He was a righteous man and very devout. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and he eagerly expected the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. On this very day, the Holy Spirit impresses very strongly in Simeon's mind, leave the house, go to the temple, the Messiah has arrived. So he goes looking for the Messiah. He doesn't exactly know what he's looking for, whether this would be, maybe he doesn't even know if it's a grown man or a little child. He doesn't know. The Bible doesn't say that he knows, but he, he's coming looking. But the Bible says he is led by the Holy Spirit. And he's led to the very place where Mary and Joseph have handed off their little baby to the priest for him to hold up before the Lord and dedicate to the Lord, especially as their firstborn. Firstborn ch males were dedicated especially to the Lord in this way. Notice that the Bible says he was very devout. He was a seeker. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. He was looking for something to happen. And now God is leading him to find the Messiah. Every day he was praying for the Messiah. He was looking for the Messiah. And now he found him. And he reached out and he took that little child in his arms looked into that precious little face of that newborn, held it close to his chest, and praised God that he had been able to see the Messiah. And he said, Lord, now I can die in peace as you promised me. I have seen the Savior. He is the light to reveal God to the nations. He is the glory of your people Israel. He made a prophecy that this Messiah would not be just for Israel, but would be the Savior of the world. And that prophecy is coming true today as we speak. Will your greatest happiness be some present that you unwrap in a few days? Or will your greatest joy be rediscovering a love for Jesus this month. Another amazing short story unfolds right afterwards there in the temple. The, immediately after Simeon takes that baby and prays, an elderly lady walks up. The Bible tells us that she was 84 years old. Now that's a, that, would, that would be a very good record today but back then, that would be highly unusual with the lifespan much less than it is today. 84 years old, her name was Anna. She was a prophetess, and she lived inside the courtyard of the temple. That's where she lived and stayed. She had a little place where she put out her mat at night, and she didn't have a house. She just stayed there in the temple. She was praying and fasting, the Bible says, for the Redeemer to come. Look at verse 38. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God. She talked about Jesus to everyone who had been waiting for the promised king to come and deliver Jerusalem. She knew that was the Messiah. God told her. She knew, and then she went out telling everybody that she could that the Messiah has arrived. Only those who looked for redemption, who looked for the Redeemer, were those who recognized him. Now the final story is well known, but look in this story for new meaning. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 2. And here we find another very familiar story. The visit of the wise men, Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men, magi, from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king? The king of the Jews. We have seen his star as it arose, and we have come to worship him. Skip forward to verse 10. 
And when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house where the child and his mother Mary were, and they fell down before him and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You know, there's something that sounds very familiar about those words. It reminds me a lot of standing right beside Izzy and hearing words a lot like that. Uh, you know, there's, there, but there's, what is the common thread that's running through all four of these stories? What is that common thread? The, the shepherds, Simeon, Anna, the Magi from the east. What was it that unites all those stories together? What is the, the common thread that runs through those? What is it? It's that they're all the seekers. These are the seekers. The few. Those who are really... They searched for... and brother and I love to go down onto the beach, not exactly where the sand was. We, okay, we did some digging in the sand, castle building, yes, but we looked for where the, the rocks were on the beach, where the gravel was on the beach. And there we would, we would slowly walk back and forth, back and forth, trying to be the one who found the most agates, the most agates on the beach. And over a number of years, we filled up a very large jar with agates, beautiful agates, where you could look, hold them up and see the light through them. Beautiful. And uh, we searched and searched and searched for agates. Most of what we found was just little ones. Every once in a while we found a big one, about the size of a half dollar. If we didn't take time to search, we wouldn't have found the beautiful stones and it's the same with God's beautiful message. In the Bible, the Bible calls the Messiah the cornerstone, the chief cornerstone, the one that's solid, that we can build our lives upon, that we can trust, the one who will lead us. What kind of Christmas will you have this year? What type of Advent do you desire? Will you see the lights, the presence, the tinsel, or will you see beyond all that? Will you see only entertaining and gifts and busyness? Or will you see the deep and eternal things of God? You know, I've decided to look for Jesus this Advent season. To invite him into my life again each day. To continue that into the new year. I've decided to read my Bible and the book, The Desire of Ages, that retells these wonderful stories, including the story of the nativity, the incarnation of Jesus Christ, in a way that just brings it to life. So what about you? If you choose to make a covenant with Jesus in this new year and in your heart, he will be found by you. He will speak to you. He will come and abide with you. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Here's what God promises to you. You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation as well. If you will look for me in earnest, you will find me when you seek for me. Let's pray together, shall we? Dear Father in heaven, we pause right now to just ponder the amazing, wonderful gift of Jesus, the Son of God, the creator of the universe, and his sacrifice on the cross, as well as his demotion to become a human. We praise you for the second coming of Jesus approaching very soon. 
Help us to be those seekers who know the times in which we live and, like Anna, share that news with everyone around us so that they, too, can have the privilege of knowing him who to know is life eternal. We pause right now to tell you that we covenant with you to seek your face each day, each morning, as we begin our days as in through this coming year. Lord Jesus, you hear our silent prayers. You're already answering our prayers. And you will bring revival and new spiritual life into our daily lives. And use us in your service. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to give you just a little invitation. We're going to have a little short intermission time now, time to uh, greet others, uh, time to get ready to go to our Bible study groups at 11 o'clock. There's Bible study groups in this room. There's Bible study groups behind the platform in the Mary and Martha's Hall, down the, down the hall. And then there's also going to be Children's Church today, a very special program with Pastor Austin in the Youth Chapel for Children and their families. So have a wonderful Sabbath, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you tonight at the Journey to Bethlehem uh, get-together this evening.